You can sync an Eon Timeline document and a Scrivener document so that the one will be duplicated in the other. So you can have the best of both worlds. You can have a timeline, Eon, running parallel with a, a narrative in Scrivener where you can write as much as you want to for your novel. But how does that work in practice? This video takes you through the process, the process that I went through syncing Scrivener with Eon Timeline. If you watch it all the way through, you'll get an idea of the very many possibilities that there are. And you will also see me doing things that you might like to avoid. I did them so you don't have to. I'm working on the first draft of my science fiction novel, which is called Loose in New London. I wrote the zero draft in Scrivener uh, during the NaNoWriMo session of 2023. Then in 2024, I tried to get a grip on the chronology of the novel by creating an alpha draft in Eon Timeline. But I neglected to fuse the two from the beginning. So now I am in the interesting position of having a very full Scrivener document and a very full Eon timeline, which are the same story, but at two different stages of development. So my first question is, can I fuse the two? The answer is yes. Yes, I can. But it's not straightforward and it might not be the best thing to do. Let's start by saying that Eon timelines recommended best practice is to start with an empty Scrivener document and an empty timeline and sync them from the very beginning. From what I can see, that is a very good idea, but it's not where I am and it may not be where you are either. When I was getting into this, I found myself asking a chicken and egg question about which document I ought to make first, assuming I was starting from scratch. Can I open a completely new Scrivener document from inside Eon? Or can I open an Eon timeline document from inside Scrivener? Well, the answer to the first question is it doesn't matter which document I create first, but I must have both documents in existence before I can sync them. And, and this is important, I must initiate the sync from within Eon Timeline. I suppose it's obvious when you think about it, though it wasn't obvious to me when I started. Scrivener can get along perfectly happily without Eon Timeline. Eon could also get along perfectly happily without Scrivener, but it looks as though Eon was developed as a, a plugin or an add-on for Scrivener, and therefore the onus of responsibility for making the sync rests on the shoulders of Eon Timeline. That said, the button you need to look for in order to set up a sync is this one with the double arrows in a circle here in the left-hand panel. For the purposes of this video, I have set up three files on my hard disk. Uh, one has a full Scrivener document. Uh, it's a copy of my 2023 zero draft. And one has a copy of my 2024 alpha first draft in the form of a full Eon timeline. And one has both a copy of the zero draft and a copy of the uh, alpha draft both the Scrivener and uh, Eon Timeline. So let me start by showing you what happens when you sync two full documents. My suggestion is not to do this. When you sync these two documents, what happens is that everything in the Scrivener document will populate to the Aeon Timeline. And at the same time, everything in Eon Timeline I really must learn how to pronounce that properly. Everything in Eon Timeline will populate to the Scrivener document, duplicating everything in both documents. 
I'm showing you this by reference to the narrative section of the timeline and the manuscript outline in Scrivener because the narrative section is the Eon Timeline's default sync setting. You can sync lots of other sections. This is just to show you that with two different full documents, syncing them duplicates everything from the one into the other and the result is a mashup. I suppose you might be able to unpick them. Um, they do at least come one after the other, one below the other in Scrivener, one beside the other in Eon's narrative, but it looks like a lot of work for little joy. So let's take a look at syncing from an empty Eon timeline to a full Scrivener document. We'll start with the copy of my zero draft in Scrivener and we'll set up an empty timeline. I'm going to choose the fiction story timeline template. Um, I'm going to lose all the example content and save it as empty Eon timeline, making sure that I save it in the same file as my Scrivener document. Now I'll just show you the different tabs. So this is spreadsheet, subway, narrative, outline, mind map and back to the timeline just to prove it's all empty and there is nothing up my sleeve. Now go to the double arrow sync item. Click on set up syncing and choose Scrivener. Uh, Eon can also sync with another software that's called Ulysses. Um, I do not have it. Uh, if I did have it I think the Ulysses icon would appear here. So I choose Scrivener and I find myself looking at the root where resides the last copy of Scrivener that I opened. Do make sure you are looking at the correct Scrivener document or you may find yourself syncing with a different Scrivener document, one that you were not expecting and that can lead to a whole other series of frustration and tears, believe me. Click on the correct Scrivener document and you'll be offered all sorts of options. For this exercise, I will take the default option. The narrative folder in Eon will sync with the manuscript of the Scrivener document. But note that you can create multiple files if you choose. Click Next. Sync Properties offers another range of things to sync. I am not going to pretend to you that I know what all these are. I have not explored that far yet. Let's just accept the default options here too. Eon Label syncs to Scrivener Title. Eon Summary syncs to Scrivener Synopsis. Click Next. In this panel, which gives you the option to sync Eon types to Scrivener keywords, I was tempted and I succumbed. I checked some of the boxes. I checked character, story arc and location because I have all three, I think. And then I clicked OK. Now, in Eon's left hand sync panel, you can see a note that says you have out of sync items. Click on the Sync Now button. In the line at the top of the timeline, you can see zero items with dates and in blue, 74 without. These are the narrative items from the full Scrivener document that have populated my empty Eon timeline. Read what it says in the middle of the timeline field. None of your events have dates, so nothing is, a vis is visible in the timeline. Drag events from the left panel or use spreadsheet view to assign them date, dates. In the right hand panel, you can see an empty event card. I am going to make a whole other video about these event cards and about character cards and other things later. For now, let's look at the left hand panel where it says narrative. Open the narrative panel to show the 74 items without dates that the Scrivener document has populated to the Eon timeline. I'll quickly open this in the spreadsheet view so you can see how it looks there. And then we go back to the timeline. Okay, before I go on, 
Let me set today's date to the 21st of June 2500, which is when my story takes place. You can see a dedicated video about this if you want. I'll put the link in the description. Back to the narrative. Let's take the first item. Luce and Carter passed by Ecar. Despite the instructions, I cannot drag this onto the timeline, no matter how I try. Instead, I will use the right-hand panel to put in the date and the five-minute block of time I think that this event takes. And yes, I failed, and I typed in 2025 instead of 2500. But you see, the event is now in the timeline, so let's change the year and put it in the right place. Now we'll set the time and date for the second item, Luce and Carter Witness Chain Gang, but we'll do it in the spreadsheet view. Back to the timeline, and there it is. That second event is neatly parked on the timeline below the first event. So that's how you can sync an empty Eon timeline to a full Scrivener document. Next up, syncing a full Eon timeline to an empty Scrivener document. I have called the full timeline loose in New London Alpha Draft. Let's just take a look at it. I'll open it and I'll change the magnification so you can read some of the items as I scroll down. Now let me show you what that looks like in some of the other tabs. In the spreadsheet view, in the relationship view. Now I'll change the magnification back so you get a better overview. This is the subway view. And this is the narrative and the outline. And here are the same two items we looked at in the previous sync example. Now we need to set up a new empty Scrivener document to sync to. So the first thing to do is to open Scrivener and choose the template. You could select blank, but I choose fiction and novel, the novel template. Let's call it Loose in New London Alpha Draft. And before we click Save, let's make sure we are in the right file on my hard disk. You see how easy it is to make a mistake here. OK, the new Scrivener document has a lot of educational material, which we don't want. So we'll get rid of this, send it to Trash. OK, as I save this, read what it says in the middle of the screen. Manuscript contains no sub documents. This is before the sync. Now, I'll take us back to the timeline. I'll click on the double arrow icon to open the sync panel. I'll click on set up syncing. I'll choose Scrivener, just as we did before. Are we in the right place? We are, thank goodness. Now, open the Scrivener file and click on the Scrivener document, which is loose in new London alpha draft dot scrivx. Open. In this panel, we can keep the default narrative folder slash manuscript. But just to change things up a little bit, let's add another folder. Let's add characters. We'll keep it as a flat list and we'll click Next. On this panel, notice there are now more things to choose from under Choose Properties. I guess this is because I set up the character folder in the previous step. I'm not going to touch anything here. Let's just click Next again. And in this panel, I'll do as I did before and check character, location and story arc because why not? And now we're OK. Up at the top of the sync panel, it now says you have out of sync items. And if you look really close, you can see there are 412 of them. 412 compared to 74 in the previous one. That's because this is the more advanced version of the novel. So we click on the blue sync now button and 
the warning and the blue button disappear, the documents are in sync. Let's check. Back to the file, open the Scrivener document, and yes, the Scrivener manuscript panel is showing all the Eon timeline items from the narrative panel. And here are the two items we looked at in the previous test, but when you open them up, there's nothing in them. And this is because the Eon timeline only has events and characters. It's the zero draft that has all my writing. But that's okay, I was expecting that. This time I was expecting it. Okay, uh, let's take a quick look at the character cards. In Scrivener, there is nothing more here either, probably because I didn't choose any of the subfolders before syncing. I'll hold that over to another video too. For the time being, let's close the Scrivener document down. Back at the ranch, I mean back at the Eon timeline, we now have two out of sync items. These are the things that I opened in the demonstration. So let's just sync now, save the document, and we're done. So here we are. This was a much longer video than I'm usually comfortable making, but I hope I've covered all the most important points for you. What am I going to do? I am probably going to sync my full Eon timeline with an empty Scrivener document because the full Eon timeline is the more advanced version of the novel. And then I am going to fill the Scrivener with the text, the writing, the story, um, taking it from the zero draft and rewriting it, adapting it, um, fleshing it out, editing it down, all the things that you have to do to get to your first draft. That's what I'm going to do with my own writing. With the future videos for this, uh, I'm going to have another, well, I'm probably going to use the same um, file on my computer. I'll throw away everything and I'll start again and I will uh, film myself adding items into the character cards, the events. I'll take you through how uh, you can use, how I have learned to use um, the narrative, uh, the outline, um, the subway view, um, the spreadsheet and even the mind map. I think I can do something with that. And um, a few videos to look forward to if you're interested. With any luck, there's somewhere around here a link to another video that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. Um, it would be really nice if you gave me a thumbs up on this video, if you feel it's been of use. So anyway, thanks for viewing um, and cheerio until the next time. Bye bye.